Hallelujah, hallelujah. Very, very good afternoon to you, ladies and gentlemen. You're very welcome um, to this moment of the I Am Prophetic page. Pastor Robert Ramela are my names, and I uh, want to appreciate God once again for having brought us um, in the house of the Lord. We are in the I Am Studios right now, and we are having the lunch hour starting right now in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, so send out a message to your friend, share the link, um, invite a friend. You will have ministered as well, as you will be my extended voice out there. So invite your friends, connect to this lunch hour, and uh, God is going to bless us. I um, want to thank God this day. We are about to close the week. Um, I mean, I beg your pardon, we are about to close the month of October, and... Uh, it has been such an awesome experience and an awesome journey of faith in this month. And want to bless God because all throughout he has uh, blessed us, he has given us the victory, he has lifted us up. So we return all the glory to God. I bless God for the vision bearer and I thank God for Prophet Emmanuel Agnes. Mama, God bless you so much for giving us this opportunity always to stand before the people of God and share the word of God. We take it, we don't take it for granted. It's always an opportunity um, for your God to bless us. So I appreciate and honor the grace upon your life. I also want to appreciate God for uh, Bishop Paul Chukem and Prophetess Miriam Obina. Once again, I bless God for uh, Mama and Papa, for you are such a powerful blessing in our lives. Your prayers, your um, dedication, your words of wisdom, your rebukes, your encouragement have all played a big role towards who we are. And for that, we are so grateful. I appreciate God for all the servants of God, uh, for uh, Pastor Helen, for Apostle Isaac, for Pastor Brian, uh, for Evangelist Sto Cheng, uh, for Pastor Sarah, Pastor Joan, uh, Pastor Grace, and um, Pastor Martin and all the servants of God, um, we appreciate God for you. But above all, we appreciate the Spirit of God because He is the only one that knows the future from the beginning. And it is in His intricate plan, as He is from God the Father, that He may explain the purpose of God. So we appreciate God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit for again availing us with uh, such an opportunity in Jesus' mighty name. Why don't we get into a prayer and then we quickly get into the sharing of the word of God. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the moment you've given us to share your word. We welcome your presence. We welcome the grace. We welcome your um, blessing in this hour. Bless my pe the people that are going to listen in. Connect them to the streams of life. And above all, we return all the glory unto your name. For great and mighty things have you done. And that which you're still doing in our lives. We thank you for we prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Well, we want to thank God. This time we want to appreciate God. For um, he is always doing mighty things. He's doing great and mighty things. We are so, so, so honored that um, God is um, in the process of blessing us as the body of Christ uh, in a moment like this. So, wherever you are, get connected. And uh, we're going to hear from the word of God today. We're talking about effective prayer. And uh, so... That is what we are going to hear from as um, we're going to be sharing in Jesus' mighty name. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We bless your name. We glorify your name. For you are a God who does mighty things, who does powerful things. You are a great and mighty God. So we welcome your presence in our midst today as we're going to share in your word. Speak to us the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Effective prayer. Effective prayer. You know, the Bible says in James chapter number 5. James chapter number 5. And verse number 16. 
um, to 17. Uh, the word of the Lord says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Elijah was a man just like us. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain in the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crop. Uh, I think he said Apostle, um, Apostle Elect Isaac was sharing with us uh, on a man of God called John Knox, and um, this was a revivalist in the times of... Uh, uh, the season when the church in England was experiencing persecution, uh, I think it was from Queen Queen Elizabeth, either the, the I think the first or something, and uh, she persecuted the church because, of course, she represented uh, at that time it was the Roman um, Catholic imposition of, uh, and they did not allow any other doctrine apart from the one that was imposed by the Pope. So that is when the church went through persecution. And um, John Knox was a man of prayer. He was in Scotland. At that time, uh, of course, it was as it is right now. The Queen is the one that, of course right now, although they are independent states, but in that time uh, the Queen was overall and the monarch was more stronger than the government that, that it is right now. The monarch was, uh, she was absolute, she was the one that wielded power in those states. So as she was persecuting the church, when the name John Knox came to her table, this is what she told uh, the people that wanted to arrest him. She said, I fear John Knox more than the armies of Europe combined. I fear that man. And John Knox, uh, Brother Isaac was telling us, was a, a, a man that was a very small guy. He was, in fact, a very weak man. But because of prayer, this man was used of God to turn Ireland, uh, Scotland over to Christ. As a matter of fact, it is said that even after his death, 10 years after his death, there was no bar in, in Scotland. These were men of prayer. So, someone may say, but okay, pastor, so do you want to say that um, what prayer is? Prayer Is prayer misstanding and blabbering words for almost three hours and then that is when I know that I'm a powerful man of prayer? Uh, is prayer be making me shouting the loudest uh, in, in a prayer session that they know that I'm around? Is that, is that what makes me to be a very powerful man of prayer. What is effective prayer? What does it mean when we say effective prayer? Hallelujah. That is why we have showed um, what James 5 and 16 has said. It says the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. So there is what they call a righteous man. Do you understand what the righteousness is? This is what they call powerful and effective. Well, I've discovered the first man that it was accorded righteousness in the Bible was Abraham. And we discovered that because Abraham was a man of faith, it was accorded unto him righteousness. And we all know that with Jesus, thank Jesus for coming and dying on the cross. We became the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So in other words, this righteousness is not your own personal endeavor. It is not your input. It is not your do's and don'ts. Though of course they play a big role because Christianity has to be a life of discipline. You have to make sure that you abide in him because that is the rule. You have to carry your cross. But never make a mistake of thinking that because you pray the most or because you fast the most, you are righteous. No. This righteousness is by the Spirit of God. That is why the Spirit of God is the one that is responsible for our sanctification. 
I want to start off by saying this. With everything, effective prayer begins and ends with the Spirit of God. Because He is the only one that can lead you into knowledge. He's the only one that can lead you into the place of um, praying effectively. It is not about how long you pray. It is not about how much you shout. It is not about how committed you are in prayer. It is true. All that happened. But if it is a personal endeavor, then it is very wrong. Um, the revivalist Martin Luther, I'm not speaking about the black arm, the one that was in charge of the black move in America. No, we're talking about Martin Luther, the, 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 reform, the reformist, actually. He was a priest then, and um, this is what they did for the priests to attain righteousness. Number one, they were secluded in a certain place, and there were steps that they always had to ascend and descend uh, in a certain moment of prayer, and they were using their knees. The rule was that the more they punish themselves, the more righteous they became. So imagine Martin Luther going on his knees, I can imagine maybe like from here up to maybe the police headquarters in Naguru, you can imagine on your knees, on that concrete gravel, and they could do that, priests could do that, and their knees uh, being scalped and full of blood was to them a sign of God accepting their, them to be righteous because of what they have done. <laughs> it was until when Martin Luther, the word came to him that the just man shall live by faith and, you know, because of that, it revolutionized him and what happened in the end, he knew that righteousness is imputed, not because uh, of what you try to do, but it's because of the finished work of the cross of Jesus. And the sign of the finished work of the cross of Jesus is that he left us the spirit of God. Hallelujah. So, effective prayer begins and ends with the spirit of God in our dispensation. I want to read for you a scripture. And um, we're going to talk about effective prayer today. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We are going to see what causes effective prayer. Every Christian should be in the know of this. Because if you are ignorant of this, you may waste a lot of time. And yet you are not called to waste time. You are called to bear fruit. That is something that we all have to get it. Now hear what the Bible says. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now the word of the Lord specifically says in John 16 and uh, verse number 13. But when he the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I say the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. Praise the name of the Lord. So, Jesus tells them that the Spirit of the Lord is the one to work. Uh, Zechariah 4, 6, 4, 2 of course says, it is not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. Glory be to God. All right. You know the greatest hindrance to effective prayer has been ignorance. On a very powerful note. Because there's been a lot of ignorance in the church. Many have been wasting time thinking they are praying. And yet in most times, they have not actually been operating in true effectual prayer. Glory be to God. Maybe what is ignorance? I want to start from there. Then after us we'll get into uh, what it means to pray effectively. Now the Bible says in Hosea 4.6 that my people perish 
because they lack knowledge. So ignorance is lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. I'll tell you, a church that does not teach its people how to pray is a church that is operating in ignorance. And very soon, when the storms of life appear, this church will not be able to stand. Because life, I'll tell you this, this is the fact, this is the truth. In life, you can never avoid storms. Storms are the thing that make the great sailors. Every great sailor encountered a storm. And it is from their survival that they became skillful. God, in his wisdom, allows life to take turns such that you navigate life and you acquire a skill. Glory be to God. So, ignorance is to be unaware. When you don't have knowledge, you are unaware. It is very deadly for a Christian to come to church and they are unaware. You know, we have always said it and we, let, we are always going to say it. Let the church, we call, there is a call for the church to return to the place of balanced doctrine. What we are having now, especially the, the, the popular gospel that we are having now, I call it the, the, the popular cheap grace gospel, is a gospel whereby they leave everyone in a hyper mode because they tell you are the righteousness in Christ and because of that they'll tell you sin, your sin is not that bad. He, he, he forgave you. So repent and turn back to God. You see, it, there is some truth in it, but it is, it is a deception. Actually, the greatest deception that the enemy is using in our end time is the deception whereby it is no longer black and white, but it is gray and white. You know, when something is gray and, sorry, gray and black, it is no longer black and white, but gray and white. And gray and what? Gray and black. Why? Because when you look at the two, there is a little difference. They look similar. So, when a Christian is moving in ignorance, he is unaware. And it is very dangerous because while Satan's kingdom is called the kingdom of darkness, it's not because they put on black. No. Black is a symbolism of meaning there is no light. There is no knowledge. There is no awareness. When your spirit man cannot discern and the discernment is because your spirit man is connected and dependent upon the spirit of God. You know nowadays we are having people that access the spiritual realm but not through the spirit of God. They are using dark, uh, dark acts of, ma uh, of, of, of magic. That is not God. Only the spirit of the, of the Lord should be um, what I mean the Holy Spirit should be the guidance in the spiritual realm. So lack of awareness. Ignorance also means lack of information. And you see that this is a dilemma in the church. We usually tell people, especially you that confesses Christ online or maybe anywhere we preach, we tell people, go to a Bible teaching church. Don't go to churches because you heard the pastor does miracles or because FBCD. Go to a Bible teaching church because, ladies and gentlemen, even miracles will cease at one point. Even prophecy will cease at one point. But the word, the word of God taught in its fullness. The Bible says, 2 Timothy 3.16, that the word of God is for doctrine, for reproof, and for, uh, you know, it gives, it outlines the purposes of the word of God such that the man of God will be what? Will be um, strengthened, will be full in his good works. Hallelujah. So, ignorance and satan thrives a lot in the place of ignorance ignorance is very very deadly and when the church is moving in ignorance the enemy will always work against it praise the name of the lord amen well ignorance enemy's misfortune has been connected to ignorance i'll tell you this any mountain you see that cannot be moved is because somewhere there is ignorance. Mountains are supposed to be moved. Actually, it is not a mountain of problems. It is a mountain of your ignorance. 
I think I'm speaking to someone this afternoon. Hallelujah. Let me read for you a statement here. The degree of your ignorance will determine how much the enemy subdues you. How much the enemy preys upon you. How much the enemy frauds you. The degree of your ignorance. See, many of us are smart, but we are not wise. And these two are very different. Education on itself is not the opener of wisdom. No. Do you know that you can be educated to learn the wrong things? Someone was speaking to us one time and they are telling us, you can imagine, now according to our primary system, by the time we are through with our education system, the one that was left to us by the colonialists, at age 13 you are still having no clue about what you should become. Because they are pumping with you social, with social studies, they are pumping you with science, they are pumping you with all this, and yet maybe you're supposed to be a, foot, a footballer. In Europe, by the time a child is 13, they already know what they want to become. You can see the difference. And all that is because of ignorance. When you are ignorant, you cannot be wise. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. So, when you are ignorant, you are fearful of the future. I'll tell you this. We have the Spirit of God to help us. Do you know that even in the midst, you can imagine, in the times where Israel was in crisis, look at the times of Abraham. God showed Abraham the future. Look at the times of Jacob. Do you know that Jacob, because he was a man who was a friend of God, even in the time of the famine, the Spirit of the Lord told him that there was food in Egypt. And he sent his sons. You know the danger is this. And I pray that to every spiritual father listening, teach your children how to hear from God. Because Jacob's children were all there, helpless. It was Jacob that told them, I hear there is food in Egypt. And then he sent them there. But as regards his children, they had no clue. They were all just, you know, they are all around him and they, they, they had no clue of what to be done. Until the man that heard from God tells them, now, according to what I hear, there is food in Egypt. Spiritual fathers, teach your children, teach your spiritual sons, teach your spiritual children how to hear from God. Because very soon, when you relay the mantle to them, and they do not know how to hear from God, your legacy will be destroyed. Hallelujah. So, even in the midst of crisis, because we are knowledgeable, we can avoid, we cannot be fearful. Amen and amen. There is a lot we can speak about ignorance. But I think now you understand why I'm speaking. And by the way, I've discovered the root to most problems, the root to most uh, problems that are unchallengeable is because of ignorance. So ignorance is also the root of problems. Why? Because you don't understand where this problem is. You cannot get the solution to your problem. And that is what ignorance does. Do you know that when you pray, and when you're praying, you're praying in ignorance? Hmm. I'm telling you, you are going to waste a lot of time. You're going to wait, waste a lot of time. So that is why I bless God that this week, my mother, by the Spirit of God, led us into a conference speaking specifically about prayer, effective prayer. Hallelujah. I believe that you that has not yet joined in, connect. Connect. I'll tell you this, your level of ignorance is the level of how the enemy will defeat you. Let me say this once again. Your level of ignorance is the level of defeat in your life. Your level of ignorance is the level of shame in your life. Wow. God is helping us. If you're hearing me, say amen. So effective prayer, number one, 
if you are going to be effective in prayer, seek knowledge. This one, there is no shortcut. Knowledge is a, is a fact. Knowledge is a fact. Proverbs, chapter number 8. You can do nothing outside knowledge. Amen. Please open your Bibles in Proverbs. Proverbs were written by perhaps the wisest man that has walked the face of the earth. Because when you read the things of the life of, of, of Solomon, no man yet has exhibited such wisdom. Proverbs chapter number 18. 8, sorry, I beg your pardon. Proverbs chapter number 8. And I'm in verse number 12. I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. So even you see, because wisdom is the Spirit of God speaking. Wisdom is the voice of the Spirit of God. Did you hear me? Wisdom is the voice of the Spirit of God speaking. So when you say the voice of the Spirit of the Lord, we all know that the voice of the Spirit of God, that is of course, you can say that is Jesus, you can say that is God the Father, because the Spirit of God does not speak anything, but that which of course he picks from the hierarchy of God the Father and God the Son. So, I wisdom, I dwell with prudence and with knowledge and discretion. So the first point about effective prayer, knowledge is a must. Before you go on shooting your prayer points, have you ever inquired of the Spirit of God what direction you have to pray with? Very important. Because when you don't have that, you can never break through in prayer. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, very importantly, is seek knowledge. Amen. Okay. Let us continue and uh, see what is the next thing about effective prayer. The next thing about effective prayer is this. Never pray, never start a prayer, never end a prayer without using the authority of the name of Jesus. Never start a prayer, Father, don't you say I'm suffering? Father, don't you? No. Father, in the name of Jesus. Your prayers, permission, your prayer's identity is in the name of Jesus. The merit for you is this statement. John 16, in verse 23. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Let me say that again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Have you heard what I've said? So, the identity of your prayer is in the name of Jesus. Make no mistake, of starting your prayer and ending your prayer without the identity of Jesus. Father, come, come through for me. This is the reason why even demons respond to the name of Jesus. They respect and they honor the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 4 and verses 10, Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus does this man stand here before you all. So even uh, the apostles to operate in the miraculous, it was in the name of Jesus. 
I am beginning off this series uh, uh, because today I wanted to start in prayer. If, if, if the grace helps me, before we end this week, I'm going to be touching on the subject of witchcraft. And um, we are going to pray, dealing, to, dealing with especially witchcraft in church. What is witchcraft in church, especially on the subject of prayer? Because nowadays we are having many witches in church thinking that they are praying and yet they are simply releasing incantations and enchantments. So I'm going to be speaking about the subject of witchcraft in, in church. Get your pen and paper because we shall be breaking down uh, what enchantment is and what prayer is. That is why today I be began by speaking about what prayer is. So anything outside the knowledge in the word, anything outside the authority in the name of Jesus is an enchantment. So do you know that many people in church have been witches unknowingly? They have been operating in the office of witchcraft unknowingly. Did you know that? Hallelujah. All right, we're still speaking about effective prayer. Effective prayer three. Effective prayer. If a man wants to be effective in prayer, they should learn before they go to their prayer to forgive. Do you know how many times you start off your prayer in bitterness? God never responds to a prayer that is made in bitterness. He cannot. He cannot. You are wasting time. If you think you are going to go into prayer and you are going, you, are, you, you, you know, you cannot. Praise the name of the Lord. Hear what the Bible says about prayer. Matthew chapter number 6. And verse number 7, as we go down to, I think, verse number um, 12. Forgiveness. It says, and when you pray, do not keep on bubbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive also, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Hallelujah. So, very importantly, forgiveness is a must. That is a point. That is a must. So I've spoken about knowledge. I've spoken about the name of Jesus. I've spoken about forgiveness. Then, very importantly, for, for any prayer to be effectual, what is the kingdom motive behind your prayer? Do you know that many of you are praying, Father, remember me. Give me a breakthrough. I'm going to, let me, I'm going to categorize certain prayers as we, are, as we are speaking. Do you know they are what we call, <laughs> very funny, there are certain categories of prayers that according to uh, the kingdom motive, are dangerous that you should not even try entering there. When you try entering there, you are invoking another spirit. Types of prayers you have to avoid. Hallelujah. Types of prayers you have to avoid. Because when you pray that, you're opening the door to another spirit to work. Hallelujah. The Bible says here, why do I say, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me dwell on this one. Let me try and dwell more on this one. Your prayer should have a kingdom motive. Now here, James chapter 4 and verse 3. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss. Now when you ask amiss, you are praying these four or five types of prayers. Number one, 
You are praying what they call an unacceptable prayer. Not in line with the motive of the kingdom of God. Number two, you are praying an unsuitable prayer. Number three, you are praying an inappropriate prayer. Number four, you are praying an unallowable prayer. I'm going to try and break them down. The number five, you are praying an impossible prayer. Hallelujah. Many have prayed foolish prayers. You find a brother or sister in the corner of the church, tears running down. Father, don't you see your son is suffering? Father, don't you see they have ashamed me? They have mocked me a lot. Arise, calm down, O oh God. Where are you, O oh God? Heaven? No, no, no. Let's grow up. Children of God, let us grow up. I've told you in life, challenges have to be there. Pick yourself up. One of the things about, especially David in his Psalms, you find out that every prayer in the end, you see that it had a motive, a kingdom motive. And I'll praise you in the courts of the righteous. I will do this for your work. I will do ABCD. He always had a motive for why he's telling God to help him. But you know most of you, you are seeking God. You want him to bless you with a house, with a car, with marriage, with a visa to travel nations, with all that. You just, why? Because in the end you want to prove to them that even you, you can also fit, you can also match their standards. That is, no, if it does not give glory to God, Jesus makes the prayer, our Lord's prayer, and if you notice, the first essence of the prayer is giving glory to God. If whatever God is going to do is never about giving God the glory. If I were you, instead of wasting time, I would go and I would go on holiday. That prayer cannot be heard. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, that is why we're having a lot of witchcraft in church. Of recent, I'm told, uh, Providence was giving us a story. One lady came boldly before her and uh, told her to pray for a certain sister in church to die because she claims God had showed her that the husband who is married to that sister is the one God showed her to be the husband, her husband. Can you imagine? We are having this nonsense in church. So, foolish prayers are very deadly prayers. Never engage yourself in foolish prayers because you are going to pray amiss and there is no reward in foolishness. Hallelujah. Number two, the kind of prayer you should avoid is unscriptural prayer. Unscriptural prayer. Hallelujah. Unscriptural prayer. I'll tell you this, ladies and gentlemen. If the word does not endorse it, no matter how anointed the man of God is where you are praying from, no matter how prophetic they are that they can see, Mom told us that not everyone who sees spiritually and they can download your life is a prophet. Some use the spirit of divination. No matter how many results they have had, that when they pray for people, things happen because even Satan performs miracles. If it is unscriptural, back off. Because you're going to open a door for your life and that door is going to affect you, it's going to affect your children, it's going to affect the next generation, you are going to be held up. Praise the name of the Lord. So, issues as regard the word of God. Um, one basic word, of course, mom uh, usually uses it. And uh, I'd like to take one or two um, statements from that word. It is in the book of John. I'm not going to read the whole bit of it, but John 1, 
there's a point somewhere and I'm reading verse number three about the word through him all things were made without him nothing was made that has been made in him was life and that life was the light of men so the light shines in the darkness but the darkness has not understood it this is what the word is the word shines in darkness and nothing was made without the word glory be to god amen so with just that we understand that if you pray any prayer that is unscriptural you are invoking something else and by the way satan is the master of scripture when you read matthew 4 we understand that satan recited scripture to jesus can you imagine now imagine you that is trying to battle with satan you are ignorant of scripture satan is knowledgeable about the word hallelujah there's also what we call so that is unscriptural amen there's what we call illegal prayer illegal prayers do you know that nowadays we have people who <clears throat> you know may god forgive us may god have mercy upon us one thing, one thing i want to tell you is try as much as possible what is your conscience telling you when you pray does the spirit of god still speak to you illegal prayers some people are, are, are enchanting now they are chanting in churches you know what do i mean when i say illegal prayers especially especially um in the area of praying in tongues praying in tongues praying in the spirit if the spirit of the lord has not given you action to pray in tongues if you have never at all been baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking tongues, ask it from him. What we have right now is we are having brothers and sisters copying tongues they had somewhere. And this is the danger. You are praying an illegal prayer. It is illegal. Do you know that as a result of that, because you are praying an illegal prayer, you are attracting enemies that are not your kind. Now I can imagine, for example, you know, I won't mention ministries, but there's a ministry I know whereby the spiritual sons pray like their father in the Lord. So that means, unknown to the spiritual sons, you know when others say that, they say, wow, this guy, there's, you know, no, please, don't, 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 don't confuse the church. This is what is going on. The, 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 the level of operation of attack that the father is going through is the same level of attack that these spiritual children are going to go through. You hear what I've said? So, avoid illegal prayers. Take it step by step as the Spirit of the Lord leads you. Then the last section is called difficult prayers. You know, I always ask myself, why is it that when Elisha told Elijah, give me a double portion of the spirit that is upon your life, Elijah told him, let us read it. Second Kings, there's, some, there's a statement that Elijah tells Elisha. And I never known why he makes this, prayer, this statement. Second Kings chapter number 2. But it's now that I understand why Elijah makes this statement. I mean, 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 9. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked me a difficult thing, Elisha said. Never pray prayers that are called difficult prayers. Elisha, in other words, what does it mean? This is what it simply means. It just simply means that if God has not told you to do it, 
don't do it. Do you know that, for example, in this, in, at Bethesda, there were many crippled and invalids, but Jesus suddenly healed one man at the pool. Don't you think about it? Why didn't Jesus touch the others? Maybe on that day, the assignment was to just one man, not to other sick people. It was just to one man. Do you know how many times we've gotten involved in, uh, you know, praying difficult prayers? What I mean by difficult, God has not told you to do it. Don't do it. Simply that way. But for you, you, you want people, you want, eh, eh, you call a crusade, bring the sick, bring the, the lame, bring the bring all that. And when they come, God specifically points to one person. Pray for that one, they are healing. But for you, because you have a name, you want to, oh, you, you know, it's very bad. Elijah, Elijah tells Elisha, what you've asked me is a difficult thing. It is not that it was difficult, but it's because Elijah had not been told to do that. So that's why he tells Elisha, nevertheless, when I'm leaving, if you see this and this and this and this, then you know that God has done it for you. And if you don't see it, then you know it has not happened. Praise the name of Jesus. I believe you're blessed. Glory be to God. Amen. Hear what Jesus says. John chapter 5. In verse 19. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. You see, when you do something that is not part and parcel of let me read it again. John 5, 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. For what things soever he does, these things also does the Son likewise. And you know that that is the specificity of the Spirit of God? He does not do anything apart from what he sees Jesus and the Father do. There, wasn't, there was one man, and um, he got a curse because he did, not, he did something that was not, he was not told to do. We all know the scripture, but because of the emphasis of what we are teaching, First Samuel, we know um, in chapter number 13, I'm going to show you the instances that disqualified Saul. He did what he was not supposed to do. Do you know that Saul's disqualification was because he did what he was not supposed to do? Listen, here you know the Bible says, 1 Samuel chapter number 13. And the Bible says, and verse number 5, the Philistines assembled to fight Israel. I'm reading from... Uh, uh, verse number 5 to verse number 15. And the Philistines assembled to fight Israel with 3,000 chariots, 6,000 charioteers, and soldiers as numerous as the sand on the seashore. They went up and camped at Michmash, east of Beth Haven. When the men of Israel saw that their situation was critical and that their army was hard pressed, they hid in caves and thickets among the rocks and in pits and cisterns. Some Hebrews even crossed the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. Saul remained at Gilgal, and all the troops with him were quaking with fear. He waited seven days, the time set by Samuel. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and Saul's men began to scatter. So he said, Bring me the burnt offering and the fellowship offerings. And Saul offered up the burnt offering. Just as he finished making the offering, Samuel arrived, and Saul went out to greet him. What have you done? asked Samuel. Saul replied, When I saw that the men were scattering, and that you did not come at the set time, and that the Philistines were assembled at Michmash, I thought, Now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal, and I have not sought the Lord's favor. So I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering. 
Verse number 3. 13. You acted foolishly. Samuel said, You have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him leader of his people. Because you have not kept the Lord's command. Then Samuel left Gilgal and went up to Gilbert in Benjamin. And Saul counted the men who were with him, and they numbered about 600. Glory be to God. So you find out that this is what disqualified Saul. So he offered sacrifice, and yet that was not what he was supposed to do. I know that you're listening to me, and there have been many mistakes that you've been doing because you have done a difficult thing. In other words, you've done what God never told you to do. You know, of recent, we are having men of God calling themselves prophets, and yet they are pastors. They are doing a difficult thing. God never called them to do that. That is going to disqualify many people. May God preserve you. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you in these remaining five minutes. But before I pray for you, maybe you're out there and you don't know Jesus. You've been hearing all this and maybe you, you are moving along channels and you stumbled upon I Am Ministries. And uh, you said, wow. And you sat down and you've been listening to this word. I want to pray for you. You that does not know Jesus, wherever you are, take this moment now to get on your knees and put your hands in your chest. And repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I welcome you today in my life. Forgive me of my sin. Remove my names in the book of death. Write them in the book of life. Devil, I reject your ways. And I reject your works. And I speak from today that I confess Jesus with my mouth. And believe in my heart that he died and rose again. And that he is coming again to take us home in his kingdom. I declare that I shall live for you all the days of my life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. You that has done that. You are now on the journey of uh, God listening and answering your prayer effectively. Like I usually tell them, I'm also telling you, seek out a Bible teaching church. Do not go for any excitement. Seek out for a Bible teaching church. Understand the ways of God. Go to the place whereby they speak of sin as sin, not people who with that sugarcoat sin. And God is going to help you. Let me pray for those that are listening again. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the listeners. It is my prayer this afternoon. In Jesus' mighty name. For oh Lord, as we've been speaking, some have been praying outside the jurisdiction of the name of Jesus. Some have been praying, but without recognizing that they need knowledge. Others have prayed, but Father, they have been having unforgiveness. They have been having intentions and motives that are never connected to the purpose of your kingdom. Forgive, O oh God. Spirit of God, I ask you again, rewrite a new life in them, in the mighty name of Jesus. My prayer this afternoon for them, O oh God, is that renew them once again, refresh them once again. Father, we're in the season where you promised us that your house is a house of prayer. And when your sons and daughters seek you in prayer, when the watchmen seek you in prayer, you shall make Jerusalem a praise. Receive all the glory for that which you are doing in this time, in this season. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. God bless you. Uh, this is Pastor Robert Ramala. God bless you once again. Uh, don't forget, this is the revival week today. We are having ministration from Pastor Helen. She's going to be speaking to us in regards to my, the house 
uh, my father's house being the house of prayer. So God bless you once again. As you connect, call your friend, send this video out to others, send the link out actually, send the link out below, there is a link below, get that link and send it to others and God is going to bless you. Shalom and be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. God bless.